Hogstock. Hey everybody, welcome to the Hogstock. We are in the final two games here with the Washington football team. It has been a slog of a couple weeks. <laughs> I think we all know last week was really bad. Uh, this week, Washington is getting ready to take the Eagles on again. And I'll tell you, I know they like backloading the schedule now with these, you know, conference games. But this whole playing the same team, you know, twice in three weeks, and we're doing it two times, that's a bit much for my taste. I'm not loving that as a football fan. The, the, First of all, I'd say this season is in the death throes, not the final. Sure, <laughs> sure. That's also a fair statement. But I agree. If you remember, I remember, I don't know, maybe 15 years ago, somehow Washington ended up playing Tampa twice in a row. Remember this? This is maybe like the mid 90s. And I don't, don't know remember. how that happened. It was before the modern scheduling conventions, you know, but I agree with you. I don't really care for this Dallas, Philadelphia, Dallas, Philadelphia. It just gets kind of boring to me in terms of like what we do in the show prep and everything. I'd yeah. rather have new different teams. Yeah. I think it needs to be spread out more. Jamal, uh, <laughs> I know you just finished your other show. Any, any talk about scheduling in your other show? Absolutely not. We was, we was all, f- <laughs> look, no, I, put, I, I leave it at that. I think we were all focused on more, more non-football related items as it relates to 2022 coming up. So no, no scheduling. So you've thrown in the towel, you're doing your fantasy drafts and all that stuff. Is that, that's where we're at? Well, you know, um, once a week, once a week we deal with all 32 and, um, it's not necessarily centered on, you know, the Washington football team and, and that, that show itself right. allows a little bit more flexibility. Um, because we know a little bit, we know each other much more than um, the, the the common group. Like we known each other for ten plus years, so it's easy. Um, so we can talk about we can talk about right. more things, and and that's that's what the concept of tonight was. Um, so no fantasy football. It was all about your goals for twenty twenty two. Reflecting on twenty twenty one, man, it was a good time. Um, and like I told you all, I tell the people now. Um, you know, we we celebrated with drinks. <laughs> so that's that's where I'm at right now. Yeah. That's where I'm at right now. But so Jamal me. is in the state I'm normally at for shows, is what what we're saying. Yeah, I I will <laughs> never forget that halftime that halftime show that you did that we had to remove, but I re, yeah. I will never forget <laughs> that moment, Alex, where that you that was a mix it. of a very strong beer and very strong whiskey. Yes, <laughs> I understand. Um, and and Steve I, had to take over <laughs> and and put his foot down like this yep. is not happening. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I remember I was sitting in a sports bar watching that game, and Alex called me in like the second quarter, and I, I was, was like, hammered. "I want to do a I, show." I said, "Okay, we're gonna do a show in like two hours. Relax." <laughs> you know, I don't know what you're talking about, Alex. How did I like? And you know, I, then the next thing I know, he's you know saying awful things about you know Dan Snyder, and it's published. And I was like, "No, absolutely not." Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that has to go. Yeah, that was <laughs> that was a that was a moment. Um, <laughs> I, I'm sure sh- I'm kind of shocked I didn't do it this week, last week, well, because you know, this, I that really was too. I was expecting you to be slurring your words when we were doing the uh, you know, late hogside late night yeah. recap show. Uh, Alex, you come a long was way, that was at least two years ago. You've come a long way, yeah. That so was you don't, you, you're not yeah. surprised, you shouldn't be shocked. Like, this is something where you've come to learn that Washington goes through these things. Um, and it hasn't happened in a long time, if you think about it, though, <laughs> seriously. This this type of loss hasn't happened in ten years. Like the last time we we looked like this was actually the the Philadelphia game against in, on Monday Night Football against Michael Vick. Yeah. Well, you know, you missed the you weren't with us on the recap, but I actually to entertain myself in the second half of this game on Sunday night, I went through and looked at every single game in Redskins history all the way back to 1937 to see how it ranked. And you can listen to that on the other show. But the bottom line is this one was somewhere between the third and fifth, third and sixth worst game that the franchise has ever played, yeah. including that Monday Night Massacre game, including the Patriots in 2007. Oh, that Patriots one. You know, that was including crazy. that infamous Bears. Yeah, yeah, including the infamous Bears game in 1940, you know. But it, it was legit. Last week was legitimately one of the worst games 
Oh yeah, it in was. franchise history, it was. And uh, unfortunately, we have some news we got to cover that's also sad uh, about not just this team, but uh, I think we should start with the big story in the NFL. That is that John Madden passed away, uh, eighty-five years old. Which you know, for a guy who loved to eat nothing but turduckins with his bare hands, uh, <laughs> eighty-five is a pretty good run. Uh, I'll give him credit there, man. Uh, but an absolute legend of the game, right? I mean, it's fair to say without John Madden, football would not be the number one sport in this country because his branding with the video games and how that kind of expanded football's fan base was huge in the 80s, 90s, and early 2000s. It's kind of funny because... Depending on how old you are, you have a totally different outlook on what John Madden was. Absolutely. I'm not old enough to really remember him as a coach, but there are those people who are who remember him as an outstanding coach, and that's their primary uh, view of Madden. Mm-hmm. I remember him as the premier television color analyst right. on CBS. That's how I remember him, but people younger than me have no recollection of that, really, and they think of him as the face of the Madden game franchise. Well, so it's it's amazing all these things this guy did. He had a pretty long overlap between being a broadcaster and the fran- the game franchise. Uh, you know, like you said, you remember him starting in CBS, but he also was on Fox for a long time as the prime guy for Fox. Uh, he was on Monday Night Football for, what, 15 years? Something like Something that. Like it was it. a huge chunk of time that he was on Monday Night Football. Um, but, I mean, yeah, like, I think for my age, Jamal's age, that Madden video game was a huge part of, like, being a football fan. You know, like, that really opened your eyes to so many things about how the game can be played. Mm-hmm. And also... How how are coaches bad at clock management? Because everyone else figures it out when they play that video game. <laughs> <laughs> you know, there's that part too. Yeah, I I loved I loved Madden, man, and and um truth truthfully, uh, I played it in 2020 as well, so a year ago, but um, obviously he attached his name to it, but uh, a conversation that we we aren't going to have right now is just understanding how how bad the product has become. Um, and that's, that has nothing to do mm-hmm. with Madden itself, but the overall nature of the game and understanding that um, he just having that game and, and obviously the battle with 2K, just he was able to to attach himself to a game that was developing the plays, developing the players, having the, the consumers of the product understand the game better through his game. And and at one point when he was directly involved with the game through his commentary, because you all know Alex, um, when you did the, at one point when you did the the Ask Madden plays, his voice was attached mm-hmm. to it. Um, he tell you what to run. He tell you why it would make sense. And and when you listen to his commentary, it's like you know what, Madden knows what the hell he's talking about. Let me go ahead and pick this play. Um, let me move forward with this decision. Um, because he is the guy who lightens up the situation with whatever, whichever down it is or whatever. And, and obviously we're just talking about one video game, but in the in the grand scheme of things, he opened everybody's eyes up to, to what the, the game of football could become. And um, I was appreciative of it, man. And, and, and rest in peace to, to John Madden. But uh, that was a game that was attached to all of us, especially to the youngsters, uh, people my age, who lived Madden growing up man it was it was it was incredible oh yeah yeah it's just too new for me but you know to me he will always be mad in summer all calling yeah. that premiere game you know so rest in peace john madden yeah the the that to me that's also the duo like i know Madden worked with al michaels for a while he worked with a couple of but it was always madden and summer all is what i always yeah thought of it that's as. the team that you wanted was madden and summer all yeah yeah um, I think he even worked with Cosell. I saw a video because uh, Fox had that whole documentary they just put out about him. Yeah, I missed it. I, I didn't see it. Well, they put it on Christmas don't. Day. Who's watching TV? Yeah. Yeah, no, I know. They. It is a bit ironic that they just ran that, 
you know, hour long Madden special on Christmas Day, and then he passed like two days. Or later, very likely they you know. knew that the end was coming, so they did it for him. Maybe I mean it, we don't. There was no, there were no reports about what happened to him, other than obviously he was eighty five, yes. so it could have been a lot of things. But age, age yeah, is what happened. You know, I mean, yeah, yeah. Uh, generally speaking, if someone dies over eighty, I don't ask questions. That's my rule of thumb. Like, okay, you know, you made it past the average life expectancy, but you know, safe home, John Madden, because you definitely had a huge impact on the entire world of football more more than Absolutely. probably almost any other player or coach uh, probably yeah that's fair yeah fair to say all right uh we got more sad news to talk about um this story we touched on briefly during the show last week but we didn't want to really dwell on it but you know we have time now the whole terrible situation with the shades or everett uh a car crash his i believe it's his girlfriend olivia peters uh, dies. He, supposedly, he lost control of his car on the highway, hit some trees. Uh, two of his teammates were right behind him. They were all coming home from, I, I guess they were all out together. Uh, I don't know, or the restaurant or wherever, but uh, they saw it. They you know, were there as witnesses, called emergency responders, that kind of stuff. Everett's done for the year, obviously. You know, it's a serious crash. Uh, and they said he had serious but not life-threatening injuries. But just a terrible, terrible situation. Uh, and still not a whole lot more known to this point. Uh, no, there's no um, – there have been no reports of legal ramifications or reports as to the specific and immediate cause of the crash, mm-hmm. anything like that. So there's really no speculation to even make on that regard from you know the legal perspective but um and nor do we really know what his injuries are i mean I, the report was that he was in serious but stable condition and now he's released uh, you know he's on the non-football injury list and certainly he's not coming back this year you know but in terms of what it's, his real injuries are i certainly wish him the best i mean but i i think it's probably for him it's probably more of a mental game than anything you know i don't know really who the woman was who was with him but you know, that's the kind of thing that stays with you. You know, you don't sure. just get over and show up and play a football game after something like that. Yeah. No. And, you know, I would I would expect him not to come back this year. Yeah. Um, it's an unfortunate situation um, for, and I know we're going to talk about it for a second, but it's an unfortunate situation for DeShazer and Monte, Montez, man. Like, understanding that DeShazer is in a position or was in a position where, you know, he was – you know, with this supposedly, because I, I really don't know, but supposedly, uh, you know, his girlfriend. Um, and um, accidents happen, and, and this was a fatal one, and, and I really can't imagine the level of grief and responsibility he may feel for, you know, how he went through what he went through and, and how he's mm-hmm. managing it. And I, I don't want even want to, you know, go down that lane and for Montez. Uh, the reason why I wanted to speak. Well, let's just stop and let's just stop and tell people what you're talking about. Okay. In case you haven't heard, the news that Jamal was talking about with Montez Sweat is that his older brother was murdered via gunfire in Richmond, Virginia. Yeah, Anthony, on, Anthony Sweat. Uh, Wednesday, I believe. Yeah, Anthony, yeah, Tuesday or Wednesday. Yeah, Anthony, that's what Jamal is referring to. Yeah, yeah. twenty-seven years old. Uh, he lived in a suburb of Richmond, Herancio. I'm not really. Aaron Senio? Yeah, I, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know Ri- Richmond suburbs. I barely know DC <laughs> suburbs. So, yeah, you know, so- he was living out the out there, and gunfire at his apartment building, and he was uh, killed, unfortunately. So rough year, or rough couple days for the team in terms of the off the field stuff, and you know, that, you can't. I can't imagine what'd be going through either of these guys' heads at this point because both of those are terrible. Yeah. Um. Well, go ahead, okay. Um Yeah, that's that's where I was. That's where I was going to go to, Alex. Uh, just to transition to Montez, uh, and, and and the reason why I was I wasn't hesitant on on talking about the topic is because I, I kind of spoke on it with uh, the friends from All Thirty Two. Is you know I, I spoke on my brother who passed away last year, um, in in, mm-hmm. in in part of the conversation that we had and. 
uh, as it relates to Montez, you know, you all know that my sister's dad, um, she was murdered, right. murdered in 2008 and mm -hmm. she was murdered. Um, she was a victim of gun violence and, um, I'm not going to sit here and say like, I know what Montez is going through. It's just me understanding that, um, the, the trauma that can, you know, derive from a situation where you just never seen it coming. Uh, you, you were going about your day dealing with your life, dealing with the, the stresses of your daily life, whatever it may be. Um, me being in high school, uh, and, and, and understanding, you know, where I fit in my society and Montez Sweat uh, as an adult dealing with, you know, his actual day to day work and, and obviously being a professional football player and coming into the con coming into the, 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 the news that his brother was a victim of gun violence and, and your brother's no longer with you. All of a sudden, these things are traumatic and these things take a turn because you never know what you were going through with your sibling. Um, whether it's good or bad, you know, you could have been on good terms or bad terms, you know, who knows? Um, I don't, um, we don't know their relationship, but just understanding that those things do exist. Like real life things happens. And Ron Rivera talked about that after the game against the Cowboys, that like when you go through yeah. situations with COVID, when you go through situations with the Shazer Everett, the captain of your team who is no longer with you in terms of playing, not necessarily like life or death, but DeShazer Everett is no longer with you because he's hurt, but also he lost his girlfriend. Supposedly, I, like I said, I don't know who she is, but these are real life situations. And, and not only after he said that about DeShazer Everett and the COVID, um, Montez Sweat loses his brother. Like these are things that are real. Mm -hmm. This isn't football related. And people have to take that into account. And the more we talk about it, the more we realize these things the more you understand how significant this real life situation is as opposed as as opposed to just trying to play a football game man it's the football game becomes minute um it's not that important anymore and no matter how much you want to try to push things behind you or sweep it under the rug and and play for your sibling or pay for your loved one these things are real and it's going to be hard for you to shake the feeling that you just lost somebody not even a week ago um and you're going to play for them or you're going to if if they do decide to play obviously the shaver we know the shaver is a different story but montez we don't know but but deciding to play for these guys man you're playing for a playing with a heavy heart because you just lost somebody who was near and dear to you and and um, you, you never know how they take that, man. So I, I feel for Montez during this time because it's never easy, and I understand what he went through. I just don't. I, I don't know how he feels, but I understand. Yeah, I um, I don't have any siblings, and I don't have a family member that's been a victim of gun gun violence. So I can't relate in that way. But I was in the military for a very long time, and stuff happens, you know, when you're in uniform. So in that regard, you know, I can kind of relate. And, you know, people take these things in different ways. You know, you can't, like Jamal said, you can't just expect Montez Sweat to show up and play football game necessarily. You know, it's just, it's trauma, you know, serious trauma. And, and I certainly, you know, football is secondary to losing a brother and, you know, if he doesn't play, you know, fine. You know, the life will go on. You know, the football will go on. And I just hope he takes care of himself and his family for sure. Yeah. I think, you know, what else can you say? Of course, of course, your family. And, I, you know, it's one thing I've said in my work life uh, to all my coworkers. Any situation that comes up with your family should take precedence over you being in the office. You know, like. Anything serious with your family always comes first to me as a just as a human being that that's how I prioritize my own life. That's how I hope other people prioritize their life. Your your, your job should come after that. It, it not it, it, in whatever order you put them. Family should always come over your job. So, yeah, you know, uh, and so, you know, just thoughts with Montez, too, uh, on that. That's a tough situation. Paul, you, you touch on it. We don't know what their relationship was. Uh, I, I have not lost family members to that kind of violence, but 
losing a family member unexpectedly and if if you're on bad terms sometimes that's even worse because you can never set it right so you know that yeah. hopefully they were on good terms in in his case cuz it just makes it a little easier yeah i guess what we're all saying is if you guys out there listening see that Monta Sweat isn't going to play this week and we don't know, but don't get irritated, you know, about it. Yeah. It, you, you know, it's, uh, there's more important things yeah. than a job. And I would like to add, Absolutely. I would like to add too, um, you know, teammates can be affected by this as well. Like, and that's kind of the nuance of this whole situation. And I'm not, we're not here to create excuses for others, but that that's part of what Rivera was saying. Like, this is real life situation. Like this, this is something that you can't mm-hmm. account for as it relates to football, and you never know how they're affected in terms of supporting their teammates, their brothers, people that you know they they've spent so much time with. You just never know, and um, as it relates to his teammates, Montez Sweat, and even DeShazer Everett, the people that are close to those two individuals, you just never know, and um. That's just kind of where I'm at with this whole thing, man. I feel for both of these guys, and I feel for the, the teammates um, trying to trying to recover and, and, and compartmentalize something that's much more larger than the game of football. Yeah. yeah. Well said. Well said, yeah. All right, let's take a deep breath and change up and talk about the, the game that's coming How up. How about roster cause... updates first? We really got to do roster updates. Yeah, all right. Updates. All right. Let, let's palate cleanse with a little roster update because that was a rough 20 minutes there. So. Yeah, it was. Um, so the good news on roster updates is that Brandon Scherf and Cole Holcomb have been released from coronavirus jail. So they are both back on the active roster. That's good news. The bad news is, is that Daryl Roberts got locked up into coronavirus jail. So he's ba- he's on that list. Hmm. Um, and, and, you know, there were a couple of practice squatters. David Steinmetz ended up on the COVID list. Bo Benchwal did note those are both offensive linemen, uh, you know, and, and uh, in the case of Steinmetz, he's been activated, mm-hmm. uh, you know, they've used him. So that's uh, a bit of a negative, but they're up to 52 on the active roster now. So that's good. Um, in terms of injuries. So the DNPs on Wednesday were Samuel Cosme with illness, uh, William Jackson, the third calf, uh, Montez Sweat, which we just talked about. Um, those are the DNPs. And then Sadiq Charles, Antonio Gibson, Curtis Samuel, uh, James Smith Williams limited, and Taylor Heineke is listed with his knee problem at, as uh, full practice. And the highlights are the Eagles. Um, Miles Sanders didn't practice Wednesday with a hand injury. And uh, there were a bunch of uh, – Jalen Hurts is listed with an ankle problem. And that's really about it in terms of key players with injuries on the Eagles. So that is our roster update. All right. Uh, so the team is getting healthier overall. I mean, I know you said one guy is now on the COVID list, but it's not like we're missing a key player anymore. Uh, so, Well, if you want that, I, of course, I have this because yeah. I'm just a nerd with this huge spreadsheet, massive spreadsheet. So the COVID list guys that are left, Zach Bailey – the guard who was a practice squatter, Bo Benchwell, Nate Orchard, Daryl Roberts, David Steinmetz. That's all that's left yeah. on the COVID list. So again, no no big names there. It's a, it's no. Yeah. So that's gonna make this game versus the Eagles very interesting now. Uh and I, I say that because I think we all remember last time we played the Eagles two weeks ago, it was basically a practice squad who was out there at that point. The the team was missing a lot of key players, um, and, and it showed on the field, honestly. So it'll be very interesting to me, guys, to see how the Eagles play against Taylor Heineke instead of Gilbert or whatever his name was. Gilbert Grape. G- Garrett, Garrett Gilbert, yeah. who's still on the roster, by the way. Oh, is he? I thought we yeah, would have kind of... If anybody wondered, good. yeah, I mean... Oh, okay. Yeah, I mean the the quarterback room is is Heineke, Gilbert, and uh, Allen. Okay, all right. I didn't realize that they couldn't cut him yet. Um, so he's not gonna hit the field though. Hopefully, uh, it sounds like Rivera's gonna see if Heineke can do it or go to Allen is what he was kind of saying uh, in the press this week. Uh, well, yeah, of course. Yeah. I mean, Gilbert, Gilbert's been here like five minutes. Right, right, right. <laughs> you know, of course, it's gonna be Kyle Allen. Right. So. 
you know, I'll be very curious to see what do you guys kind of see? How how different do you think this team's going to look now that we've got at least our starting quarterback, most of the starting line back, um, you know, most of their I mean normal players. Look, it's they looked as bad as a football team could look last week. Yeah. And they looked almost that bad against the Eagles two weeks ago. So I think the single biggest factor for this game for Washington isn't on the field. It's not numbers. It's not film. It's can you guys get your act together and look like pros Mm. for the first time in three weeks? Can you look like a professional football team? You know, that's step number one. You know, will, will the offensive line not look like a sieve? Right. Will the defensive line be able to contain Jalen Hurts? Because, incidentally, if you weren't aware, the Eagles have the number one rushing attack in football. And it's largely because of Jalen Hurts. Yeah. But in terms of offense, you know, don't forget they've got Darius Slay out there. He's another guy that kept the lid on um, Terry McLaurin pretty well. You know, so that's yet another big battle, um, you know, for McLaurin out there to try and win. Um, but I certainly think that... The, uh, they just have to be, don't you, don't they have to be a little better than last week? Is it? It's just not possible to play that awful two weeks in a row. Hopefully, you know. So I just have to think they're going to be better. Oh, um, yeah. I I think it's by default. <laughs> um, the way things have. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah right. It's by default. Going, <laughs> How can you be um, worse? Personally, and I'll be I'll be brief in mind. To be honest with you, all, uh, Washington is in a position. I I think twenty or I said twenty 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 one is is been unique, but twenty weeks. What are we? Week sixteen, week fifteen. I don't think. Yeah. No, no, no. I'm week saying week fifteen and week sixteen. I don't think we expected them to be that bad in the moment that Ron Rivera was waiting for. Um, week fifteen, obviously being the first game against the Cowboys, and then week sixteen. Um, do I have my weeks wrong? Because I know we played three games. No, 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 no. no, no. This is week 17, week 16 Cowboys, weeks. Okay, so yeah, week 14, week 14 through, through 16. That's what I meant, two Cowboys games. So week 14 through week 16, I don't think that we expected Ron Rivera's teams to be as bad, especially given that we were waiting for this moment and Ron Rivera was waiting for that moment to play against the divisional opponents. He played against Dallas Cowboys twice. He went down 21 nothing twice. Um, he went, <laughs> that's just, that's just terrible to say. Um, <laughs> he went down to, he went down 21, nothing twice against the Dallas Cowboys. And then obviously Philly, um, to go start up 10, nothing. And then obviously, uh, I think they went on a 20 to nothing run. Um, eventually went in 27 yeah. to 17. Uh, th- that was just a situation for them where you just didn't see it, see it coming regardless of the COVID situation. Um, and, and as we, as it relates to this week, week 17, you're hoping for the best. Um, you're hoping for <laughs> the best. Yes. That's and about all you can wait for. It's impossible to, to be that bad 56 to 14 again. But when you, when you analyze the situations that they're in and, and understanding that the two and six start was similar to what you've seen the last three weeks, um, Mm-hmm. I don't know how much better they're going to be against the Philadelphia Eagles this time around. They may it may be closer. It's hard to not be closer, but I don't think that is 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 a guarantee that it'll be a close game. Um especially how things have gone in totality of 2021. Well, yeah, look, if they go down 56 to 10 or whatever again, Ron Vera needs to be fired. Like ASAP, I just don't believe they're going to be that bad. Uh, you know, I don't. You know, uh, you know, numbers wise, um, particularly on defense, things have gone south. Yes, in a you big know, way. Even, and we'll get to that in a minute. You know, but in terms of offensive numbers, if you guys want them, um, you know, they're twenty fourth in points now. Uh, you know, twentieth in total yards, twentieth in passing yards. So the rushing yards is deceiving. You know, they're 14th in rushing yards. It's because of Heineke's, you know, scrambling ability. Right. Um, but, you know, the Eagles have a pretty good defense, you know, and they're, they're good against the run. Yeah. Uh, you know, they're, they're only giving up 3.9 yards per attempt all year. 
Um, and they're also pretty decent against the pass too. But I, I think they're 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 better against the run. So to me, because we always try to give you a game plan to win this thing, right? And this is assuming that they show up and don't look like a bad high school team. It, you know, assuming they look like an NFL team. To me, the game plan needs to be short passing. It's really a shame that JD McKissick is not there. I think this game is tailor made for JD McKissick. Yeah. So they're gonna have to find somebody who can fill that role, whether it's Antonio Gibson or Jarrett Patterson or Jonathan Williams. You know, what about whoever. Curtis Samuel, but- Steve? He could do it. <laughs> well, I'm I'm sorry. Did you say Curtis Samuel? Yes, it was a joke. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. I, I, the, the name was ringing through my head as like a name I should know, but I don't know where I've seen the guy before. <laughs> <laughs> you, you know. Oh, <laughs> Curtis Samuel. That's please. fair. <laughs> I, I just look in all seriousness. Until Curtis Samuel shows up and actually does something, he's not on my radar scope. Yeah, I know. Anymore, I know. It's just over. He shouldn't you know? be. But so, to me, yes, it, it, a fully functional and performing Curtis Samuel would be a big help in a game like this. Right. Because, again, you know, with Darius Slay out there, there's not a guarantee that they're going to – this is going to be a long, you know, four verticals type of game necessarily, I don't think. Um, so I, I think this is a tailor-made short passing game. If Washington can pull it off, I just don't – I mean – God only knows that they can at this point. Yeah. Yeah. I think uh, that that's a, it is a bit of a conundrum because obviously you want to go to Terry, but it, the, against the rest of the NFC East, they're just keying off on him now because they know that's all we have left. Well, yeah, it's right. That's all it is. It's like, you know, when you have Jimi Hendrix up there and a bunch of other guys, you focus on Hendrix, mm-hmm. you, you know? That's what's happening here is is um, to use a musical reference. I, I mean, they're keying off on Terry. Why is everyone attacking Jimi if... Hendrix? And your what what kind of music is this? <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I meant focus on Hendrix. You know, not the not the bass player is what I was trying gotcha. to say. I got gotcha. you. It came out strangely. No, I didn't mean beat up the ghost of Jimi Hendrix. <laughs> no, I didn't mean that. This is a very weird instrument situation, or very weird analogy. Now, Uh, I have no comment. (laughs) Yeah, what I I, I what I meant with that. If if Jimi Hendrix is on stage, you watch him. You do not watch the bass player and the rhythm guitar player. Watch Jimi Hendrix. Gotcha. That's what I was trying to say. Gotcha. Um, Yeah, I mean, and I think it's fair to say Terry is Jimi Hendrix. Everyone else here is I don't know. Uh, okay, insane? catch up. Yes, that's yeah. right, Alex. Yes. yes. Okay. <laughs> it was a weird analogy. Okay, I'm sorry. Just forget yes. it. And insane sucks on, for the battle. record. In my my addition <laughs> to the analogy. Yes. Um. Okay, so they're they're going to key off on Terry. So yeah, you got to open up. Go to. They're going to hand him to Darius Slay. Is what they're going to do. Yeah. Yeah. Well, or they'll bracket him. You know. And they're going to slide a safety over yeah. to him. Right. And so then you're back to, you know, that's why I think the underneath stuff is where they need to focus. Again, one of these running backs is going to have to come through and be a, re- you know, a, f- a reasonable representation of J.D. McKissick. Right. right. Uh, you know, these underneath, you know, these square outs, you know, these wheel routes, that's the kind of thing I think that they can make some hay with with the Philadelphia Eagles is though that kind of get like a Jay Gruden Game plan. That's what they need in this. They game. they really do. Uh, and also maybe try and get DeAndre Carter to play a little bit more of a slot role and not whatever the hell you have him doing. Uh, Mister Gadget guy. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I get Adam Humphrey. DeAndre is Carter the slot is what guy. Curtis Samuel is supposed to be. Yeah. That's what DeAndre Carter is. Yeah, they're having DeAndre Carter is a better version of Curtis Samuel. Well, healthier. <laughs> I don't know. Well, meaning he's there. Yes. Period. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um. I would like to see Carter, though, use more in, in a traditional slot role because I think with his size and speed, he could get some mismatches underneath against linebackers pretty easily. That that was kind of what I was getting at, though. Because uh, Adam Humphreys, nice nice addition as a fourth receiver. Not worth more than that. you know. He's a jag, okay? Yeah. He's going to make a few plays. He's a professional football player. Yes. He's there. That's about all you can say about he's, him. I think he's averaging, what, two catches a game, something like that? It's not much. Roughly, yeah. yeah. Um. All right. They so I great. think we kind of – I think I'm in agreement with you. Jamal, do you disagree or agree with Steve on the whole idea of just dink and dunk your way in this game? 
I think we need to start Kyle Allen. Um, I, I I tried to I had myself on mute because Dakota's about to act up with her with her her toy in my background, but that just means she's agreeing with my but, analysis. Um, no, nah, seriously, I, I think that. Hold on, girl, move, stop, <laughs> shut up, throw that squeaky. <laughs> um, I think that we're in a position for for the offense where. Uh, and, and and thing we didn't take to speak on is is what Ron Rivera said in in, in during the week the post game or excuse me not the post game but just his midweek pressures. Uh, he said that he wanted to get Kyle Allen some opportunities, but I think that uh, now that's not his full quote verbatim. But I think that uh, for those who haven't read up, I, I would suggest you all to try and find the quotes um, that he that he gives in his post game or or his practice post practice cr- pressures. Um, I think what he is saying when he wants to give Kyle Allen some opportunities is that uh, Taylor Heineke actually has a short leash. Um, And I think that says all we need to say or all we need to know about the situation at quarterback is not about the future. It's not about what you want to see from each player to make a decision on their future per se. But I just think that Washington – needs to finish this season strong. They need to see what they can get out of their uh their players. Curtis Samuel, Deami Brown, um and others who have lacked mm-hmm. opportunities or who have not made the best of their opportunities uh that they've gotten under Taylor Heineke. So for me, Deacon and Duncan to answer your question directly, I don't think that matters. I just think that it's the quarterback itself who is struggling and if Taylor Heineke continues to struggle, I think that his leash is extremely short. Um, and he'll pull the plug as soon as he recognizes that nothing has changed. Um, and, and I think that that moment can come as early as the first quarter. Yeah, no, I think you're probably right because this is sort of Ron Rivera's history. When he sort of mentions something in passing like that, it usually happens. Is anybody notice this? It, you know, so when he doesn't – always up until this week, he's given Taylor Heineke the full his full support. Yeah. Taylor Heineke's our starter. Yep. And then he says something like, and eh, we're trying to maybe get Kyle Allen some some snaps. That usually means Heineke's gone. <laughs> you know, when Ron Rivera says something like that, it has a lot of meaning. And to be honest, I don't know why it hasn't happened sooner. Not because I think Taylor deserved it, but they traded a fifth-round draft pick for Kyle Allen, and he hadn't played at all, basically. You know, at some point, they've got to let this guy play. Otherwise, it's a total waste of a draft pick. So, you know... There's, I mean, they have whether the team has a, a very minuscule chance at the playoff. The season's basically over for all intents and purposes. Right. You might as well let Allen play. It doesn't hurt anything. So I do think, yeah, there might be a real short lease. If it, if, if it's like he throws another interception on the first play of the game again, he might be gone. Yeah. Well, look, I think I think we're all in agreement. As much as you know, we kind of like Heineke, and you know, he play he plays a fun style of football. We know what he is now. I think I said at the beginning of the year, I want to know what we have, at least in these two guys. And all right, now we know Heineke, you know, he, he he's a good leader. He's a good locker room guy, I think. Uh, but, yeah, he just doesn't have the arm. It, it, well, it's not just that, though. If you watch the film, his mechanics are very inconsistent. Right. There's times he doesn't step through his throws. When Alex, you know, when you see like these throws going high, mm-hmm. it's usually because he's not stepping in through his stepping into his throws. Right. Right. It's his footwork is off, and and it's like he can't fix that. And and um, you know sometimes guys just ha- are inconsistent. He might just be one of those guys. And it's usually the runners that are inconsistent because they've been running their whole life. Right. You know, and they throw on the run so much. It's not like you know you have like. A totally like Mark Rippon back there, you know, who's a statue, right? You know, who has perfect form and all of that. Uh, uh, and so Heineke might be one of those guys that he's just never going to be consistent. But but it's but it's his mechanics are way off sometimes. He ha- he goes he has ups and downs through it. Mm-hmm. And uh, so what I'd really like to see now we know that. So I'd like to see does Kyle Allen have better mechanics and is he a bit more consistent in the pocket? I think that's what I'd like to see. I think that's all well and good, but I think, you know, if we're talking big pictures, of course, I, it's safe to bet neither that one neither of them these guys the is the future. answer now. Of course yeah. not. Yeah. The search goes on. As I wrote in one of my columns this week, I wrote two of them this mm-hmm. week. Yep. The search that we have been on since 
Mark Rippon left continues. Right. Right. Uh, long, long, long search. And, uh, you know, they've they've turned over every stone and they just keep finding snakes under every stone they turn over. No, sometimes they just break the stone into a thousand pieces. Yes. Yes. And then they sexually harass the stone and cover it up. Well, yeah, there you go. <laughs> and then they they feel up the stone inappropriately. <laughs> All right. Let, let's flip sides. Talk about the defense versus this offense real quick. Uh, Steve, you touched on it. Good running game. Uh, a quarterback that's frankly as much of a nightmare as a running quarterback, in, in some ways worse than uh, Lamar Jackson and uh, some of these other uh, guys. I don't know about that. But, yeah, he's in the ballpark. Look, Washington's defensive numbers have crumbled. Yeah. Obviously, they gave up a ton of points. We know that. 30th in points. But here's the number that really ought to stun you. They are last in the NFL in quarterback opposing quarterback rating. Wow. Meaning opposing quarterbacks are more successful against Washington than any other team in the NFL. Opposing quarterbacks are averaging a, have an average quarterback rating of 104.7. Meaning they're turning every quarterback into John Elway. Yeah. You know, That's basically. And, and they're still – they've come out of the doghouse on third down conversions, but they're 31st. You know, so now the Chargers have somehow gotten worse than them. Um, but the combination of letting quarterbacks go crazy and then never being able to stop anybody ever on third downs, that's not good. And and so now you come to the Eagles, who, as I said, are the number one rushing attack in football. Jalen Hurts, um, on a, as a rusher, has 740 yards, second on the Eagles to Miles Sanders. It's a dual-headed – they really – they have four guys who can run the ball. Yeah. It's not just those two guys. Jordan Howard is a quality runner, and even the other guy, Scott. What's his uh, – Boston Scott. There's four guys there who can run the ball successfully. It's a very tough thing, especially when you have a defensive line that vastly underperforms. Yeah. It's – it's uh, as compared to the capital that the team has put into it. Yeah. It, it's, not, it's not a good recipe right now, and you, you add in – the issues we've had with linebacker all year, uh, including the fact that both these guys were out last week. And I guess they're probably both back, right? Davis and Holcomb. But as of tonight, it yeah. would appear as though they're both back. Yeah. But I, I mean, it, that's not exactly, you know. We're not throwing a parade um, for that. You know, two Hall of Famers yeah. out there. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so, you know, we talked on this. Hmm? I was, I was going to bring up. Um, we talk about Payne and Allen. Um, Allen, he has a father who, first off, shouldn't be discredited or disrespected. Has huh? a big mouth. Yeah, 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 yeah. You're right. Yeah, yeah you're, you're who has absolutely a big right. mouth. <laughs> um, but he's emotional, and he's emotional about his son. And I don't, I don't expect anybody to be any less, especially when it relates to their son. But as it relates to 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 pain, I think that he removed all of. Now I, I'll say this again because I said this earlier today. I want to clarify that this is what I'm hearing. I don't pay attention to Instagram like that. But apparently, he removed all of his Washington football stuff from Instagram. Um, whether it's him being upset or whether it's an uh, an indication of what may be in the future. Um, He's feeling some type of way right now. Um, I'm going to mute myself again because my dog is dogging. So I'm going to mute myself. Okay. So um, as to Allen and Payne, my thoughts haven't changed at all. I think Jonathan Allen in particular ought to be suspended for the game. I don't think a defensive captain should be taking a swing at another teammate, particularly on the sidelines in a nationally televised game. I just think that's vastly inappropriate, and and um, it's hard to say what Deron Payne's fault is in it. I mean, he poked him in the face, you know, but I think in particular Allen needs to sit. And I'm looking at Deron Payne's Instagram here now, what I think is Deron Payne's Instagram. Yeah, it's got a blue check. Blue check mark means the same thing in Instagram, yes. I guess. Okay, so this is Deron Payne. And um, there is not one shred of evidence of anything Washington – at least on the page that I'm allowed to see as a non-account holder. Mm. So Jamal's right. That, I mean, that's usually not a good sign. Uh, and 
Payne's in a uh, his contract's up, right? Like next year or is Yes, yeah. he's a free agent coming. Yeah. No, he's a first round pick. So he's in the option know. year. Yeah. Yeah, I uh, it, it look. But my thoughts haven't changed. I mean, Al, uh, Alex, have your thoughts changed? I mean, no. I mean, look. Oh, I, by I the way, just for the right, let me clarify here. So yeah, so Payne, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. Yeah. So my, according to my chart, Payne is in the final year of his principal contract. So what Washington could do is enact his fifth year option if they wanted to. They haven't. I don't think they've done that yet. I thought they had to before the off season or something. I, I thought there was a timeline where they had to do that. There is, and I can't remember what yeah. it is. I wouldn't swear to yeah, it. Yeah. Um, well, anyway, uh, no, my, my thoughts don't haven't really changed. I know the team's trying to play it down like, oh, this was just a thing and whatever. If Ron Rivera it was serious with these guys in talking to him, then I guess I can live with where we're at now. But it, you know. Sometimes you can't have something happen in public and say when we're handling it behind closed doors. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, uh, there, there, there was a line that was crossed in the public space. I think you got to handle some of it in the public space. Uh, unfortunately, I think that's just the way the world is. Especially, you're an entertainment company in the end. Uh, you know, like you have to take that kind of mentality sometimes. Um, and I, sports people don't like to admit that they're just entertainers, but you know, you are. It's the entertainment industry yeah. at the end of the day. Yeah, exactly. Um, I just think it reflects poorly on, um, the head coach's leadership ability. Yeah. Uh, you know, I just don't think you, you can let that go. That kind of thing go. And, but, and, and, and I'm now looking at Payne Drawn's uh, Twitter page and it does have, his Washington stuff up here yeah. on his Twitter page for whatever that's worth. Okay. Okay. Um, yeah. I, that whole situation, who knows? Uh, I think we'll really know in the off season if P- pain is moved because they can't move Allen. Unfortunately, realistically, his, his... Well, I, these two guys might've squashed it, uh, you know, by now yeah, they I, probably did, hope but, so, but that's not the point. That's not the point though you know to me it's more reflection because i get it you know you know they're absolutely right brothers fight and i get that and i've already said and jamal can attest to this football players fight yeah i fought on a football field sure. on a practice field um and i was a nobody on the field you know so uh, it's it, the fight itself bothers me less than ron rivera's reaction to it which is to say eh, you know, it's okay. It's not okay, man. When you do that on national television, it's not no, okay. It's not. You can't just wipe it under the table and hope people forget. Uh, you know, Rick Snyder tweeted, look, I've seen fights like this before, but the commonality is the team sucks and there's something wrong. You know? Yeah. Uh, and I haven't seen that on in a game amongst teammates. Not in a long time. I, the stuff that – the ones that I can think of, and I think the ones that Rick was talking about was all in practice. Mm. Well, you I mean, know? the big ones, all of course, going to always be the Michael Westbrook, Stephen Davis one, you know. Yeah, but I watched. Rick, Rick has a video, by the way. It's uh, is it what's Snide his Snyder Remarks YouTube page? Snyder Remarks is it, no, it's it's I think it's Rick Snyder's. Oh, Washington. oh, his YouTube, yeah, Maybe Rick Snyder's YouTube. Washington. Yeah, I watched a couple of his YouTube videos, and he's in the fights he's talking about are practice. Sure. That's a different story. This is a game, and it's on that, na- especially in national television. Yeah. You know the Sunday night slot, and it was awful. you're losing, you know, a million to nothing, and you're gonna fight on the sidelines. That's like out of a Jamie Foxx movie. Yeah, yeah. Um, you no, know? I'm seriously. Yeah, hopefully, hopefully they don't fight. Hopefully, there's no more fighting between players on the sidelines this week. I just think it's a the bigger point is the coach, not the fight. Yeah. I, but anyway, I think that there I've needs to be enough. some change. Like, look, maybe Rivera's not gone. They got to make some serious changes to this coaching staff next year. You, you can't have this much of a drop off on that def- defense and keep the same guys going in. Um, you know what? I was about to use another musical analogy because I love my analogies. Um, but I'll, sc- I'll spare you all, all right. my an- another analogy. But um, this coaching staff just looks old and tired. Mm. To me, there's not a lot of energy, it, you know. And yes, Ron obviously got over cancer and all of that, and it's been you know the coronavirus year and blah blah blah. But uh, other teams aren't affected like this. Uh, but this coaching staff just looks old, 
and, and I'm not talking about age, even just the attitude. Mm-hmm. Just there's not a lot going on. There's not a lot of creativity. You know, there doesn't look like a ton of motivation. Um, it just looks like I'll, I'll use my my analogy anyway. It's like you go see an old rock band who's just playing out the string and playing the hits from 30 years ago. Yeah. You know, that's what this kind of looks like. It's like we've got Blue Oyster Cult up there playing, you know, <laughs> playing football. I, I, you know, and maybe it's a function. Of, Ron isn't young. Ron's in his 60s, is he not? I think he's Late 50s, 60, probably. Yeah, early 60s. Yeah. Yeah. I was What's saying late on? 50s, probably. I'm about to double check right now, though. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I, I, to me, it just it, something needs to change. They need an injection of new, fresh energy into 59. this franchise because it, it it seemed like it. Fifty nine. Okay. Fifty nine. Okay. It, it was there at the beginning of last year, in the off season, but then they had all the chaos with the quarterback and yeah, yeah, yeah. It, you know all of this stuff. Um, I, I just don't see that this team has any kind of edge at all, and they don't play like it. They played like it against Tampa this year. And a couple games where Heineke was really on his game. Right. But beyond that, they just looked lost. I mean, I think part of the problem is that, one, the sport itself is QB-centric, but they've built a team somehow that that desperately needs great quarterback play to keep going. And you're doing this with an undrafted 30-year-old quarterback uh, or 29-year-old, whatever he is, you know. Well, Kyle Allen's the same guy. Yeah, I know, you but know. I'm but I'm saying you're if you're going to build a team to be quarterback centric, which is what they've done ostensibly on offense, and then you don't have a quarterback, it doesn't work. Like that's a bad. Well, formula. it's also like I said, they're a running team without a running right. game. Uh, Jamal, chime in here. Am I totally wrong? We haven't heard from you in a while. Am I totally off base or what? Oh, um. If we're if we're going to talk about a coaching change, coaching change, I I think it's valid to to have the discussions after this year, and I think that um, one of the things that I was conflicted with was under was was knowing that you know Washington went through that four game win streak, but at the end of the day, the four game win streak doesn't mean anything when you take into the totality what the season was, and the season was they started off two and six. Um, and they started off two and six, and they found their way back into a three-game winning streak. I mean, excuse me, three-game losing streak. Um, that ultimately may be a four-game losing streak. <laughs> and you you wash you wash out everything that you did after the bye week. Um, everything positive. So, to answer your question about, um, or excuse me, the the notion because you all brought it up, the coaching change. Me personally. Um, I think it's a valid conversation. I think where it needs to start is obviously the assistance. Um, initially I thought coordinator, but then after hearing conversations from others and um, listening to the points that were made, I think it may start with like position, position coaches. Um, and it starts on the defensive mm-hmm. side of the football. Uh, defensive line will be the first one. I believe is Sam Mills. Um, I think that's his name. Uh, you have to kind of look into you know how this defensive line was operating and, and how was it that this defensive line was so uncooperative or couldn't get on the same page as the other people or the other units um, on that defense. And, and, and this isn't the first time it's done it. Like they were button heads last year too. And if you're button heads last year and, you, and you're going into year two uh, not disciplined, and Ron Rivera has said such in his pressures, you have to start from the smaller spots, the micro spots, and I think it may start with the position coaches. I think that's where the coaching change begins. I don't think it starts at the coordinator spots, but I think it starts at position coach. And then if Ron doesn't see things going the way things should be going after that, then we're talking about coordinator. And if coordinator don't work for Ron, because that'll be his last, that'll be his last ditch effort, right? Then you're talking about the head mm-hmm. coach. Well, yeah, then the GM may fire the coach. So the problem being that in our structure, the GM can't fire the coach. Only the owner can fire the coach. He can. He can fire him. Yeah, I was being facetious. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> you know, the, the other tricky thing about this, though, honestly, if they're going to make a move, they got to do it this year. Rivera's on, on a five-year contract, I believe. Um, 
he is going to be in year three. If you wait another year, it's a lame duck session, and no one's going to want to come and coach here for one year under him. We we saw that problem with Jay Gruden towards the end of his you know time here. Yeah, that's a good point. That's a valid point. Yeah. Uh, look, in terms of because we've gotten away from the game here a little bit. I mean, it's you know Philadelphia's a running team. Mm-hmm. They are going to run the ball, but but and, and so that comes down to this underperforming defensive line group. And knowing Montez Sweat may not be there, you know, it doesn't help. But also, don't forget the other guy who burned him last time, Dallas Godair. Mm-hmm. This dude had 135 yards two weeks ago against Washington. The nemesis of Every Washington Redskins team since the dawn of time, it seems like, is tight ends. This is another one who has burned us. So, you know, if you have a combination of Jalen Hurts, Miles Sanders, Dallas Godier, those are the guys you need to, you know, those are the guys you need to focus on. If William Jackson can play and take away Devonta Smith, that all the better. You know, but to me, those three guys, if they can contain them, they have a good chance of winning. If they can't, they're not. It's simple as that. Yeah, I think that's a that you know that's a good one. I've forgotten how badly they got beaten by the tight end there. Um, yeah, and Zach Ertz is still on this team, by the way. And by the way, I'd like to point out something. I didn't realize this, but Tyree Jackson is on this team. Does everybody remember this guy? Tyree Jackson is their version of Logan Thomas. He was a quarterback at the University of Buffalo. And he blew away the scouting combines and whatnot because he has this massive, huge arm. I mean, just like a cannon for an arm. And he was athletic, and he's huge, and he was a runner. But his mechanics were a total mess. And um, I didn't realize that he had converted to tight end. But he's their third-string tight end now. Um, So keep an eye out on him. You know, I I didn't realize he had converted to tight end either because I've seen him play. I didn't either. I thought he was out of football. I I saw him. I thought he was out of football. Quarterback in the XFL because he played in DC. So yeah, he was with the DC Defenders for five. Yeah, yeah. He replaced uh, Cardell Jones when everyone realized Cardell Jones couldn't hit the broadside of a barn. So (laughs) uh, that's yeah. I don't want to dwell on him, but I just realized that Tyree Jackson's on the roster. And I (laughs) interesting. I didn't know that. He's a big dude, man. He's a Six yeah, seven, he's a big monster guy. of a yeah. human. Um, his cannon of his yep. arm, of an arm. Yeah. Uh, all right. Uh, focusing back in on this game, anything else stand out to you about the Eagles that we need to watch out for Jamal offensively that we haven't covered? Um, fellas, you just better hope we keep it close. Um, <laughs> that's yeah. That's yeah, it. That's um, true. I don't have anything in particular what we should do or look out for to keep it close uh i mean a good thing not i mean health wise you know you, you hope the best for miles sanders but miles sanders isn't playing this week so uh you know he racked up 150 i believe yards uh he black he racked up like 100 i mean are you sure he's not yeah i thought play? they said he was already declared I, out I mean, yes he didn't practice I, okay, I mean, if that's the case, I hadn't seen that. I mean, that's a good thing for Washington if he's out. But, again, they've got two other guys yeah, that can run the ball. That's where I was getting at. Pretty like, effectively. Miles Sanders is out, but um, that's one headache that you don't have to worry about. Excuse me, uh, since, since since Steve said that, Miles Sanders is supposed to be out or supposedly out. I, you know, who, know, who knows? But um, that's one headache you don't have to worry about. But outside of that, you still got to deal with a run game with an offensive line that is incredible. Um, and we we witnessed that two weeks ago. So um, I'm not going to sit here and say that Washington has no chance. That's just not the case uh, as, as bad as things have been going. But I just don't – like you just better hope we keep it close because Washington has been reeling the past few weeks and uh, injuries and COVID just does not help. So um, I, I don't have anything to add to answer your question, Steve. Yeah. Okay. All right. Why don't we wrap this thing up to uh, score predictions and get out of here. Let's do, shall we? Alex, I will go first. Okay. Give everybody a chance to think. Look, um, this is obviously a very tough game. It's, you know, the darkest of dark days in, you know, in terms of Washington football. Can they turn it around? I mean, realistically, no, they can't. Uh, I'd love to believe they can keep this close, but I don't think they're going to. It's just impossible that they can possibly play as badly as they did against Dallas. 
and I don't think Philadelphia is anywhere near as good a team as Dallas is either. Um, but I don't think they're going to win, and I don't think it's going to be particularly close. You know, um, so I think we're looking at a loss, something along the lines of, you know, I don't know, thirty to fourteen, maybe. Um, I'll be quick. So another blowout, right? Another blowout. Um, whew, I'm I'm looking at I'm looking at a um twenty four to ten, twenty four to thirteen type of game for Washington. Um, and to be honest with you. I'm being nice on the Philly side. Like this defense has officially reverted back to the pre bye week. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I'm 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 being yep. nice. Twenty four to thirteen is my final answer. But in reality, if I had to give a um a a, a truth serum answer, I'm 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 looking at like a thirty three to sixteen or thirty three to thirteen still type of type of game for Washington. Hmm. What the line early in the week was minus yeah. four. Eagles minus four as it moved. Um, I can check. You, I can tell you right now. Hold on one second. Um, you said minus four is okay. where it started. Well, well, Jamal's looking that up. I'll I'll just give my number. At what Monday it was three Monday and a half. Three and a half was minus four. Yeah. Three and a half. Okay. It, that seems pretty generous to be perfectly honest. It, well, I think the Eagles. It's because of they have a few people out. That's why. Um. All right. I I hate to say it. I'm thinking it's going to be another ugly game here, too. Uh, I'm going to say 35-21 Eagles beat Washington here. Um, You know, I think this offense healthier. They'll put up a little bit more of a fight this week, but not not enough. And the defense is just falling off the rails. Um, I And I'll put this out there. If we get blown out again, I'm not saying Rivera gets fired, but I won't be surprised if a couple – coaches are gone after this week prove us wrong washington yeah Yeah. all right guys that should wrap up a very fun-filled episode of the hog side that was depressing as hell right right? my goodness hey guess what this was the last show of the year so see you 2021 that was it that was my ending (laughs) (laughs) oh sorry that was an ending Uh, bye for real. Bye.